Okay, let's get into some short game. Uh, short game is one of the most difficult areas to teach players progressions because there's a lot of different forms to short game and there's some different techniques that go into it from the basic chip uh, to a bunker shot and both of those actions look different in certain ways. Full swing and putting, there's not a whole lot of variable in there. Like you'll see a player make a golf swing with a sand wedge compared to a six iron and the overall move looks the same, the overall setup looks the same. Same thing with putting, the setup always looks the same and the overall move looks the same. But you watch a PGA Tour player hit a sand shot, then you watch him hit a bump and run with, a, with an eight iron. Those are two totally different systems. So let's start with chipping and then we'll get into principles of, of pitching, which are gonna again be two totally different systems. Let's get into the chipping system because it's one of the easier ones to go ahead and coach. We're gonna hold the golf club just like we would with a putter. So it's gonna be sitting in the lifeline. And to really educate a player on this to start off with, just have them hold either a putter or if they can, they can go ahead and hold the, the sandwich just like they would a putter, that's totally fine. But what's interesting with some players is you can hold it like a putter and they'll still hold it like they're holding like an actual, uh, like a sandwich getting ready to hit one hundred yards. Once I get the player there, once you can get the player there to set up to the golf club just like, and the golf ball obviously, just like they would a putter, now we're starting somewhere. So this looks like I'm just getting ready to roll a golf ball on the green. The only problem with this is in putting, we need the stern two inches behind the golf ball so we can have an ascending blow. With a chip shot, we're sure not ascending, we want it to descend a bit more. Um, and so what we need to do from right here is we're gonna take this trail foot and we're gonna bring it almost up to the lead foot. So what I do when I, when I did that is I'm taking my sternum and now I'm placing it just in front of the golf ball or what will be just post impact. So now from right here, still holding it just like a putter. Okay, now my feet are closer together. My shoulders you'll see are still on an incline because that's exactly how we would hold the putter. I'm on a slight incline here. We need a slight decline. So you'll see how this lead shoulder works down so to the point where the shoulders now are level, if not slightly down um, uh, where the lead shoulder is below the trail shoulder this, at the start. The more that you go this way, it's totally fine. You're just gonna hit lower and lower shots. If you really wanna drive one in low, you can descend more and more and more. So you're getting into lead bend in the ribs. Okay, so again, we're gonna get set up here. Lead foot closer, little descend, and from there, they'll just make their same stroke that they would. They've hit the golf ball the exact same way that they would a putt, but the descend and the sternum being um, in front of the golf ball from a face-on perspective will help with the bottom out. So now the golf club is descending, descending, ball still descending, then bottom out. Rather than the putter, we want it to bottom out, then ascend, then hit the ball. Okay, from down the line, a couple different things here that you can do where this perspective will be easier to see. And I'm pulling it just like a putter. Trail foot closer, little descend. I could hit it just like a putter from right there. There's a simple little chip. If you wanted, the player is more than welcome to get closer and closer to it. And what that will do is it will stand the golf club up so the shaft gets taller and taller. And so now in essence, the toe of the golf club is the only part of the sole of the golf club that's on the ground. Totally fine to do that. And the reason being, sometimes you don't want the entirety of the surface area of the sole of the club interacting with the turf, and you just want a small amount interacting with it. That's totally fine to do, especially for tight little eyes. No problem doing that. So again, learning this, there's putting posture. Bang, a little closer. Now when I'm doing that, notice I'm just choking up on it, and now the golf club sits on the toe a heck of a lot more. A little descent with the shoulders, same action where I'm using just the putting stroke technique to hit these little chips. So really important that the right arm is what swings the putter away, and then we replace and you release. Still the same action, boom, boom, to hit these little chips. So we're not short back and then pushing it forward, we're not back and then turning big time. You don't have to do any of that because you're just adding more moving parts into the system, which makes it more difficult to hit the golf ball solid. Totally fine to do that with a wedge. That was a sand wedge. You can do this with pitching wedge all the way up to eight iron. Um, and even in, I mean, Ray Floyd was amazing. He's hitting chips with four irons. 
For our players, bare minimum, they need to be able to use eight iron, pitching wedge, lob wedge or sand wedge or both. So three clubs around the greens because all this wasted green space of setting up next to the green, hitting a lob wedge and just pitching it out there 15, 15 feet onto the green is a waste of space. It'd be a heck of a lot easier just to get it on the green and rolling like a putt because of the instrument that you use. All of the technique is going to stay the same with that chip shot, or if you want to call it a bump and run, that's totally fine. Bump and runs and chipping, same exact type of stroke, same technique. And you can play around with, again, how close you are to it, how much descent you have in the shoulders so you can really drive it if you want to, and that's kind of the play around that you want to teach the players. That's the artsy part of the short game or chipping that you want to instruct players on. But that's basic chipping. Let's get into the pitching and bunker shots in the next video.